and welcome to the first of Vokta Gaming's Carnage Specials. I'll explain more on that in a moment, but first allow me to introduce our two players. Of course, I am your host, the vocal terrorist Jesse Rain. Helps to introduce myself first for those of you who don't know me. Anyway, first up, we have our Blue Zerg player playing now for Team Carnage. His name is Pad. And he goes up against our Red Protoss. Today, his name is QNK Brat. So, let me explain what's going on. A while ago, I formed uh, an unofficial partnership with a UK team that was just starting up its StarCraft 2 division called Team Carnage. Now, the, uh, the guy who runs that, a uh, guy called Dave, very nice bloke, is now sending me replays, which I will be casting. This will take place outside of Vokta Gaming. This will not be part of the official Vokta Gaming stuff. I will try and keep those videos coming. And these will just get casted as and when I have time. They will also be cross-posted to the Vok uh, not to the Vokta Gaming, to the Team Carnage YouTube, which is Carnage Esports TV, I believe. They will go up there first and be uploaded to Vokta Gaming afterwards. So if you're watching on Vokta Gaming, Go check out Carnage Esports TV for more Carnage stuff. If you're watching this on Carnage Esports TV, then come check out youtube.com forward slash Vokta Gaming for more of my gorgeous, gorgeous voice. So we see Brat is going to be going for the Forge Fast Expand, which is what every player is doing against Zerg currently. Because that's, that's what you need to do. Nice little blocking going on here from this pylon. Uh, from this pylon. There's the pylon. From this pro Jesus, like, can you tell I'm casting on a Sunday? Like, guys, I don't normally start casting again until Mondays. Normally give myself the weekends off, but, like, not today. So, this is going to force Pad to drop the hatchery at the third. And essentially to go three base. So, this is a nice move from Brat, but it's a good response by Pad. Rather than waiting for the pile on to finish and then having to get a pull out and kill it, he can just drop the hatch a lot, lot quicker than he would otherwise. Now, he sees the forges down. He sees the gateway. He sees the Nexus, so he doesn't need to scout anything. He knows everything that is going on at this point. Um, I suppose now, in fact, would be a good time to introduce who I am. I am a 24-year-old commentator. Not just on esports, I also do British wrestling commentary. Uh, I live in Blackpool, England. And, of course, I have the sexiest voice and beard of any commentator known to man. And here we see Pad dropping the third hatcher, going straight up to three base, which is pretty much the standard response to a pylon block from a Forge Fast Expanding Protoss. It gives you the one base advantage again. And it's pretty safe, because what's he going to do? Cannon rush you? Like, it's, it's not going to happen anymore. Like, we're not in the beta. Unless, of course, you are in fact in Grandmaster, in which case you will get cannon rushed one in every four Protoss games. Um, another will be a four gate, and the other two will probably be Void Ray Phoenixes. Basically, being Zerg in Grandmaster sucks. Um, unless, of course, you're really, really good, like Pad is, as I'm sure we'll find out soon. So, not a great deal going on at the moment. Both players are playing very economically, which is good to see. It's something um, a lot of the UK players struggle to grasp, I'm going to be honest here. Um, a lot of them really focus on these kind of one base or two base all ins. And I don't like to see that. I like to see the longer economic games. They are safer. I am being pinged by something and I don't know what that noise is. Oh, it's uh, it's Steam. Someone's talking to me on Steam. Ignore that noise, guys. That was not a game noise. Okay, so we have a robo now in the main base. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. Um, a big part of what I do is casting the South Korean players, who are very, very aggressive and timing based. Uh, they do have their economies well sorted out. There's only one queen here to defend at the moment. He needs to get his lings around there, but the lings are a way away, and he does not have speed yet. In fact, he doesn't even have a gas yet. So no speed is going to be coming for a while. But this stalker is forced to retreat along with the zealot. Oh, oh, I thought he was going to go back in with the Zealot. As it is there, the Zealot's going to get surrounded. 
Yep, that's how they get killed. Nice move from him. He's going to kill as many as possible. Not allowing them to get a surround on, but that zealot does die. So yeah, I spend a lot of my time casting uh, South Korean pros who are very aggressive, very pressure and timing based. What I tend to find in European players is that they kind of sit back off each other and just get up to max armies and then go have a big fight. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. Uh, partly to watch because obviously it leads to a lot of downtime. We have a Roach Warren and an Evo Chamber on the way now for Pav. But also because it allows your opponent to get too much up, especially against Protoss, oh, especially with Protoss and Zerg. With Terran, I really feel you have to do pressure. Like, if you don't, you are just a bad, bad Terran. Wow, that is a lot of gates. Six gates being added. So a seven gate follow up to this robo opening. Oh, with a warp prism as well. Oh, is he going to try for the grubby style? He's getting sentries out. How many? Okay, we have three sentries out. Yes, he is going grubby style. I am calling it now. He's going to pick those sentries up and float towards the main. Oh, this is going to be exciting. Now, what does Pad have? He's going to wait for the full sentry. That's a good idea. What does Pad have in the main? Nothing. He hasn't even connected these with creep. Okay, that's really bad. Guys, Zerg players the world round, connect these two bases. It allows you to get units up a hell of a lot quicker, especially these queens. Now, this warp prism is going to come down. Oh, he doesn't know about it. This is getting panicky. Oh, is he going to spot it, though? Oh, he has one Ling. This Ling sees it. Okay, he needs to get his units up into the main right now. Right now. Where's the response from Pad? Here come the Lings! Are they going to make it in time? Yes! Pad gets Lings up into the main, and this is stopped. Oh, what a wonderful spot. That one Ling doing the damage. Now he warps in a ton of Zealots, but more and more Lings being produced. We have Roaches on the way now. The sentries are out of position to force wood. They get back to the force wood in time. Yes, he will be able to. Yep, there it goes. Oh, that was not the best. The roaches squeeze past. The lings are squeezing in. Brat with a misplaced force field. He's going to lose all of his forces here. Incredible response by Pad, though. Exactly what he needed to do. He saw that war prism at the last possible moment with that ling. And he got just enough units up into the main. Oh, the warp prism dies, and Brat is held, and now Brat is in a really tough position. He is at half the supply of Pad right now. He's forced a ton of units, yes, but the fact remains that Pad is on three base, and Brat is only on two. We have the Zerg ground armor on the way as well for Pad. Oh, man. Brat needs to take another base. And fast. He needs to get units out. He needs to get tech. He needs to do everything right now. And he needs to dearly hope that Pad does not decide to attack him. Because if we look at the unit counting station, all we have is five stalkers and one immortal right now. If Pad had pushed out at that point, he may have just caught him there. But instead, Pad got to play safe, getting a macro hatch up. Something I like to see. Macro hatches are absolutely fantastic. Going to allow him to get a lot more units out in response. And I would not surprise me if he now took this base. Yep, here we go. So, Pad going up to four bases with a macro hatch. Really, really nice. That's basically what you want to do. If you if you stop a push like that, if you stop an attack uh, like that and crush your opponent, you either want to go and attack him while he's weak, or you want to expand. You want to go super economy, because there is no way that Brat is going to be able to attack him. And look at this from Pad. We have all these upgrades going down. We have the Roach Movement Speed. We have the Infester Energy Upgrades. We have the Zerg Melee Attacks. We have the Spire and the Hive. And now he's going to move out with these Lings and Roaches. Now, I would not suggest a full-scale attack here. I would suggest pressure. Check for the third, which is exactly what Pad's going to do. See that it is not down yet, and hopefully stop Brat from getting it down. Did I see a Colossus there? That must have been hallucinated. No, no, we don't have hallucinations. I swear to God I saw a Colossus there. Am I going insane? What? Okay, guys, now is the point where I've officially lost... I swear to God I saw a Colossus there. 
Uh, well, if you also saw a Colossus there, then post in the comments or seek mental help. <laughs> like I'm going to be doing. Uh, Gravitic Drive on the way. Protoss Ground Weapons level 2. So, Brat is getting his upgrades up, but uh, I'm not so sure it's going to be enough. Pad now with still nearly double the supply of Brat at this point. Pad is playing so well. He's got the Spire up now. Uh, now with the Hive, hopefully. Yep, there we go. Great Spire. Okay, so Broodlords. Broodlord Infester. That is what I like to see. That is the best late game composition for Zerg I can think of. Now he's going to try and force a cancel on this third. Kills the probe, so if he does force a cancel, it's going to be forever before it gets up. Oh, will he cancel it? Oh my god, he didn't cancel it. Pad kills the Nexus. Incredible. Now, so these roaches are trapped and will die, but look at the bank Pad has here. Pad has so much money, he can easily afford to lose these units. And in fact, that will help him to get out the uh, the corruptors he needs for those fruit lords, because you do need a bit of extra space in that supply. So these roaches do finally die, but most of the roaches made it home, and they're going to rejoin the infestors and the speedlings. Man, Pad is playing this brilliantly. I like that he's now spreading the creep. Uh, that could have happened slightly earlier, but that is cool. He's getting onto it now. And man, Brat is just so far behind. Look at the difference in banks. That is huge. So now we have a Colossus out. Okay, was that Colossus? I should have you know, I should have checked the unit counting station before now. That's what I should have done when I saw that mystery Colossus. So, ah. Pad loses one Speedling and in return sees that Colossi are definitely out. Oh, and he sneaks some more Speedlings past. Going to get them up into the main. No, not quite. That cell up there will hold them. So now they shall all die to these stalkers. Two lings get past. Just going to be a nuisance more than anything else. Wow, Brat dropping three cannons. Okay. We have the first of our Broodlords on the way. We have Zerg Flyer attacks level one on the way. And Zerg Melee attacks level two. Now, I'm really not sure. Someone's going to have to tell me with Broodlords whether it's the Flyer attacks or Ground attacks that count. Because although they have a flyer, they are Flyers, the Broodlings attack on the ground. Um, I've never really been 100% sure on which upgrade you actually need. And wow, Pad really hitting the uh, the drones hard now. I'm not too sure he needs that many drones. How many drones does he have? Oh, 70. 70 is about the right number for this late game composition. You want about 70 drones. I mean, he's making 14 spine, spine crawlers. And a small crawler. Oh, we have a Stargate on the way. That is the correct response. Because what Brat needs to do is he needs to get Archons and he needs to get Mothership. That is the only way, for me, the only viable way for a late game Protoss to beat a late game Zerg going Broodlord Infester. You vortex the Broodlords. You throw the Archons in there, and when they come out, the Archons do a ton of splash damage. Absolutely decimate these Broodlords, and it's very, very hard for the Zerg player to recover. As it is, though, Pad is going to throw away yet more Speedlings to get some intelligence here. He see, excuse me, he sees not too many probes there at that third base, so he knows that he's still miles ahead economy-wise. He's nearly wound out the main, but the second still has a fair amount of cash at it, along with the third and the fourth still being nearly full, so he does not need to yet spend any money on another base at this point. Now, we only have one Corruptor here. I'd like to see a few more Corruptors. Let's just take a look. How many has in total? Yeah, just the one Corruptor. Oh, okay, going up to... Whoa, seven now. I'd like to see him keep some Corruptors with this. I know you have the Infestors for any kind of anti-air. But I always like to see just a couple of Corruptors being kept about. Because, of course, there will be a Mothership. He knows that. The Stargate's here. The Fleet Beacon's here. He's, he's going to know there's going to be a Mothership. He's taking another hatchery. Going to use that, I imagine, more for the gas than anything else. Because this is a gas-heavy composition at the late game. More spine crawlers going down now. Wow, he is really closing off these pathways. Just freeing up supply with this. Essentially just to help him get more units out. That is that is entirely what this is about. He wants as many units as possible. Because he doesn't need the economy so much now. He has the late game composition. This is really going to come down to one big battle for Pad. And I think Pad's going to take it. Brat is catching up in supply now, though, because it's been a long time. But he's on plus one armor, plus two attack for all of his units. 
Whereas we have one armor only on those roaches. Obviously, uh, the infestors don't really matter. And only one fire attack. So, hmm, Pad could definitely have been doing more with his upgrades at this time. I was hoping to see uh, a better upgrades from Pad. And here comes the mothership. We have ground weapons level 3 on the way. So, hmm, Brat is definitely doing the right things in this game. He's getting the upgrade lead. He's getting a very heavy upgrade lead, in fact. And that's something Pad really needs to work on in the future. This is going to come down to one engagement. If Brat plays it perfectly, Pad dies and it's game over. But if Pad plays it perfectly, Brat dies and it's game over. And our favourite Team Carnage member will be taking the game. So a few roaches dying now. Absolutely nothing to worry about. The roaches are the least important part of this army. The important part is the Broodlords. We have 12 more Broodlords morphing. Wow. That is a lot of Broodlords. Holy crap, he has six there already. Going up to 18 Broodlords. Is this going to be nearly just Broodlord only? Okay, when I said Broodlord Infester, I did expect some kind of Speedlings or Roaches with them. But it turns out he just wants to kill all of those and go nothing but pure Broodlord Infester. He has a ton of Overseers out. So that he can... Interesting that he's not killing this Observer. Like, dude, just fungal it. Stop Stop letting Brat watch your army. You've got overseers there. You can see it. There we go. So the infester goes down after he shows... Uh, sorry, the observer goes down. But only after he shows all of his broodlords. We have Brat trying to take a fourth base now. That is not really going to matter in the long run. Because what is going to matter is the big battle that is about to commence. It's going to happen soon. The question is, which player is going to be the first to engage it? Now, I don't like this from Pad. Pad has nearly 5,000 minerals banks. He can't make any units. Dude, get upgrades. This is a huge, huge thing. Get those upgrades. You know, why not? It cannot hurt. It can only be good to get those upgrades out. Now, Pad has been holding off from this attack for a long time now. And I'm not entirely sure why. Because he's not doing anything. He's not building up to anything else. All he's been allowing is for Brat to get the perfect composition out. He could definitely have attacked a lot sooner than this. But as it is, we have Fungals going down. We have the Mothership cloaking goddamn everything. But it doesn't matter because the Overseers are there. The Fungals are going down on the Colossi. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Colossi are doing the damage. But really, it's the Broodlords. Will this Vortex go down? The Mothership is heading towards them. Vortex on the Broodlords. But where are the Archons? The Archons are too far away. Oh, and he fungles the Archon! The Archon does not get into the Vortex. Oh! The Vortex play failed. The Archons got fungled and they were not able to move into the Vortex. Here they go. No, they still got fungled. All these Broodlords come back and not a single hit on them. Incredible play by Pad. Pad is going to take this game. All of the Archons die. The Colossi are dying. The Immortals go down. The Stalkers blink forward, but only to die. Brat is down at 80 supply, and Team Carnage's pad is going to take this game. Not even a GG, QNK Brat quits the game, and there we have it. In the first of the Vokta Gaming Carnage specials, pad for Team Carnage takes an excellent win. So, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to Dave for sending me this replay. Thank you very much to Team Carnage for bringing me such excellent games and allowing me to commentate for them. I really, really appreciate the opportunity these guys are giving me. Um, so, this will be going up today. This should be up by the end of Sunday. Remember, it will be on the Carnage Esports TV YouTube channel first. Then, and only then, will it go up on youtube.com for, forward slash Vokta Gaming. So, if you're watching on Carnage TV... Check out Vokta Gaming for yet more excellent StarCraft 2 commentary. And if you're watching on the Vokta Gaming channel, check out the Team Carnage website and the Carnage Esports TV YouTube channel. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all very, very shortly.